Zenith Midnight Solar. Today I want to show you how the Classic Light and the Classic integrate with all of our different breaker boxes, circuit breakers, etc. To do this we're going to use my actual off-grid system here in Maine. It's running as we speak. You can hear the fans. I'm going to show you some of the benefits of the e-panels as, as well as the MNDC 15 for large systems. I want to talk about best practice on larger systems and I want to show you the variety of options we have to integrate these classics into your renewable energy system. To do this I want to go over to my outback inverters and e-panels on the wall. Okay, here we have my two outback inverters that are powering my house. We have a narrow outback e-panel, we have an outback plus e-panel, and we have the classic on the plus e-panel. A unique feature of the midnight plus e-panel is the classic mounts right on the door with the outback inverter to save space. As you can see these two e-panels bolt right together to make a nice compact 120, 240 or large 120 depending on how you stack it system. The classic integrates right into the door, plenty of room for overcurrent protection on both sides, room for lightning arresters, midnight solar SPDs on the top. Uh, all you gotta do is bring in your battery cables, your AC in, your AC out, and your DC in and you're good to go. Now I want to move over and explain our regular e-panel. This particular one happens to be a narrow e-panel and as you can see it has a one inch nipple and a mounting bracket right here. It's a little hard to see on the black wall. This classic would simply slide right on, screw on, wires into the e-panel. Okay, here we have the one inch nipple for mounting the classic. This is where all your wiring will go through. We have the mounting bracket. It's a little hard to see here because it's a black wall but you'd have a screw in here that holds the classic to the e-panel. We also have a mounting bracket for the mate, or if this was a magnum e-panel, this is where your magnum remote control would go. A little farther up here, not, not visible on camera, but we do have three knockouts for three of our panel mount breakers. We come around, we have the bypass slider. Behind the bypass slider we have an AC input breaker, which would be where your grid or your generator comes into the inverter. We move down to here, we have location for DC DIN rail mount breakers for your DC in. Uh, you can also use AC breakers there if you want to run a couple loads out of this panel. And then we move down to the main inverter battery shutoff overcurrent device. Now I'm going to move inside the e-panel. This is where the battery positive would come in from your battery bank. This cable here would be pre-wired to go to the inverter that this e-panel was made for. This is where the battery negative would connect from your battery bank and this is where the battery cable to the inverter would go for your negative. This is your common DC negative bus. This is your battery positive bus. This would be wired to this by the factory. This is a ground, earth ground bus bar. We have an AC hot in, an AC neutral, AC hot out. If this was a Magnum 120 240E panel, they'd be a red and a black and a red and a black. And as we move way up to the top in this e-panel, we have a PV plus bus bar. All of our e-panels are structured basically the same as this one. We have a narrow version like this. We have a wide version that's four or five inches wider than this. All have all the same stuff inside them, but they uh, may be configured just slightly different inside. But that's, that's basically a tutorial of the e-panel. And now we're going to move on and show you the MNDC 15 installed with four classic charge controllers. Okay, now I want to talk about the MNDC15. This is a very useful box for integrating multiple classic charge controllers. As you can see here, I have four controllers on my system. I have a wind controller, I have my first solar array, my second solar array, and my generator input, DC generator. I want to talk a little bit about best practice. This system is getting quite large on its charging capability and its inverter capability. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I've used the MNDC15 I've brought it into a junction box with its own breaker and I've run that to the battery box all on its own merit. So it's not hooked to the same terminals in the e-panel as your inverters would be. And uh, th this is important on large systems. This may be not classified as real large, but as you grow these systems, if you get into 10 or 20 or 30 controllers, it's really important to have good battery cables of their own to keep them isolated from the surges from the inverter and vice versa to keep the inverters isolated from the ripple of the inverters. So basically what we have here, we have an MNDC 15 box. This holds 15 of our panel mount breakers. 
three groups of five. It will hold eight of our small terminal bus bars. As the earth ground lug, it does have the ability on the end to have its own battery breaker, 175 or 250. I chose to put it in another panel here just due to space. It also offers plenty of option to mount SPDs, surge protection devices that Midnight Solar offers for every classic charge controller you have on the system. So that's basically a rundown of the MNDC-15 and the panel mount breakers. Now I'm going to move over to my table and I'm going to show you the, the rest of the products that we offer to integrate classics and classic lights. Okay, now I, before I go any farther with our gear, I do want to show you the difference between a classic and a classic light. Okay, on your standard classic, you have an MNGP, Midnight Graphics Panel, and you have arc fault protection. On a classic light, you have an MNLP, Midnight LED Panel, and you have no arc fault protection. This is the, big two, the two big differences between the two. I'm going to go back and explain all these differences now. The extra hardware inside is all the same. They both have the same ampacity. They both have the same voltage capabilities. The MNGP has a graphics panel that allows you to see all the data, allows you to program everything. It has the push buttons to allow you to navigate the menus, custom program everything, wind curves, hydro, everything. The MNLP has LED indicators of charge stage. It has LED indicators for errors. It also has an LED indicator of equalize as well as a manual equalization button. It does not have a graphics panel, so there are no visual indications other than the LEDs. It does have dip switches inside to program the basic functions for a solar controller as well as program equalization and the IP address so that you can function, you can use the functions of this over the local application software. The hardware itself is full functional just like the classic except for the MNLP. If you want to use this on a wind turbine you do have to use the local application software to do all the programming. I'm going to go ahead and pull the cover off and show you the dip switches inside real quickly. Okay, as you can see here we have two banks of switches or section 1 and section 2 as they're referred to in the manual. Each section has eight individual switches the information for all the switches are on the, uh, the cover and the back of the plastic here. You also can consult the manual for all of the programming. Classic Light does come with the Midnight Technical Installation Tool, which is a package of toothpicks, which happen to be the perfect tool for adjusting these switches. I'm going to show you switching one switch here, just for reference. I just turned that switch down. I'm not going to explain all the switches here just because uh, this is not intended to program the light. I just want to show you the difference between the two. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on the classic light and I'm going to move on and explain the rest of the products on my table. Okay, now I'm going to show you the classic and the classic light both use an industry standard spacing on one inch knockouts. We also give you one inch screened hole plugs for the unused knockouts. Now I also want to talk about breakers. We have a whole line of overcurrent protection or circuit breakers, DC circuit breakers. It's very important you use DC circuit breakers because AC circuit breakers will not break the arc a DC circuit causes. We have panel mount breakers. We have DIN rail breakers. We have 150 volt breakers and we have 300 volt breakers. We have panel mount breakers all the way up to 100 amp. We have DIN rail mount breakers all the way up to 100 amp. So whatever your application, we have the breaker to fit your box and do the project. Now I want to go over and explain the rest of our product, our little breaker boxes, our Mini DC. The Mini DC is listed and as you can see, a lot of our products have a wiring diagram that come with them. We also have a full line of wiring diagrams on our website. Uh, feel free to visit our website and look at all the wiring diagrams. Okay, this is the inside of the Mini DC. You notice it has an earth ground bus bar, battery negative stud, has mounting locations for DC shunt, another location for a terminal bus bar could be used for positive or something. This one has a DIN rail mount in it, and as you can see there's a hole in the side and a side plate. It'll come with a couple different side plates. One is for panel mount breakers and one is for DIN rail. If you're using panel mount breakers, you'd simply remove the DIN rail adapter, switch the side plates and use your panel mount breakers. We do have a Mini DC Plus which has two of these locations. It has another one up here 
So you could do five DIN rail here, five DIN rail here, three panel mount here, or three panel mount here. Each location is one or the other, so it's either panel mount or DIN rail. You cannot do both at the same time in one location. It also has a location, as shown here, for a 125 amp, 175 amp, or 250 amp battery breaker. It does have a variety of knockouts. As you can see on the top, it has the industry standard knockouts to line up with the charge controllers, a couple extra ones. On the side, it has some larger ones to line up with conduit boxes on the SWs, for example. Other locations, maybe an SPD, Midnight Solar Surge Protection Device, has a large knockout here to line up with the battery breaker studs so that if you're hooking this up to large battery cable, it's very convenient. Again, a couple smaller knockouts, maybe another Midnight Surge Suppression Device. The big baby box, as you can see, has four locations for DIN rail breakers. Our DIN rail breakers are 150 volt up to 63 amp, take one spot. Our 300 volt take two spots. Our 80 amp and 100 amp DIN rails take two spots. So depending on the configuration, this box can hold you know, up to four positions. So if you're using two 80 amp DIN rail breakers, it's going to hold two. If you're using 63 amp, 150 volt breakers, it can hold four. Um, this box as well has the industry standard knockout locations as well as another extra one if you needed an SPD or something. Uh, you can see it is ETL listed. Knockouts on the bottom, same way. On the inside of the box it does have a grounding lug and mounting locations for a long terminal bus bar. Now I want to talk about the quad box. Quad box is very similar to the big baby box. It as well as ETL listed. It as well has all the same knockouts. And it as well has locations for a terminal bus bar and a grounding lug. The main difference is it holds up to four of our panel mount breakers, which are available in 150 volt, 5 to 100 amp. They're also available in 300 volt versions. So 300 volt versions do take up two mounting spots. So this will hold four 150 volt or two 300 volt or any configuration of the two. That has been integrating the Classic and the Classic Light into the Midnight Solar gear. Until next time, I'm Ryan of Midnight Solar.